shift happens or shift is happening or shift happened. Uh, I don't know how we're going to describe it. We'll work on that in the next few minutes as we dive into this recent real estate shift and what that means for you. What's up, guys? My name is Ryan Gilmartin, realtor over at Keller Williams Realty Evolution, uh, Boston's uh, North Shore, specifically focusing in on city of Salem, uh, the Witchy City, and surrounding communities. Uh, and what we've been seeing is what ha other people have been seeing around the country that we have being we, we have seen a a shift going on. And you know, I'm trying to shift it into overdrive here, helping out my my own uh, clients. Um, first of all, though, I want to dive into that word shift and and obviously um it for, for real estate it means that we have a change in the market uh from the trend that we had previously seen and obviously what we had previously seen was skyrocketing prices crazy amounts of offers waiving all contingencies that's what we have been seeing and slowly over maybe the last uh year or so depending on where you live uh, we've been seeing a a, a shift to a um, a slower market. Now, I want to be very clear that shift does not mean that prices were going up and now they're going down. Uh, it does not mean that we are shifting from a seller's market to a buyer's market. When we are saying shift right now, what we're talking about is this change in the market, this slowing down of the market. It is still though a seller's market. And even when the uh, the founder of my company, uh, Gary Keller, wrote a book called Shift, it really focused in on the change from a very strong seller's market to a buyer's market, resulting from the great crash back in uh, the uh, the late 2000s, or you know, the 2007, eight uh, range. So um, what we're looking at now, though, is not something like that. This is something that we've been saying was coming along uh, we did start to see some of the factors that we have been watching uh, all sort of materialize at the same time. We knew the interest rates would be going up. Uh, we felt like there was going to be at least a degree of uh, inflation. Um, and last time I spoke about this, uh, we were looking at the prospect of a, of, of a war that impacts um, not just uh, Ukraine and Russia, but um, you know the, the world economy as well. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, fast forward now, six months, seven months, uh, and, and that's something that's come to fruition. So uh, what we're looking at right now is all those factors sort of combining to uh, slow the market down. You know, the real estate market is tied to the broader economy and things like uh, these unpredictable things like war and inflation do impact um, uh, it, the, the people's ability to buy and sell homes. So, uh, you know, that, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, happened um, and the inflation went, uh, it's not the inflation, the interest rate did go up. So all those things combined merged into one to slow things down. That being said, when you look at your days on market, depends where you live, it's still going to be um, strong toward, leaning towards a seller's market, uh, just as an example for you uh, when we talk about um, you know buyer's market versus seller market. Of course, the National Association of Realtors, what you need to have is an absorption rate of uh, about six months in order to reach that transitional um, time. We're still looking at an absorption rate right now of a month to a month and a half. Uh, and what that means is if no new homes hit the market, how long would it take uh, at the current rate of selling for all the homes to be sold. Um, so we're still a decent way away from that. And that also is the tipping point for when prices you would imagine start to go down. So we're still a decent way from that. Where we are now though, is at a steady, normal, predictable uh, increase in property values. I'm talking in that two to 4% range annually not monthly, like we've been seeing uh, in the past. So when we're looking at this current shift, it's really just bringing us back to uh, a regular predictable, predictable market. On the ground, what that means is no, we are not seeing 30 offers come in like we had in the past. Rather, what we're seeing is you know, the best homes are getting a couple of offers. 
uh, homes that are overpriced, uh, need, sitting around um, for a few weeks. Homes that are actually appropriately priced, maybe not even selling that first week, uh, maybe in that uh, full price offer in week two or week three. So we are seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, we are seeing some of that uh, pop up in the market. Um, and that's gonna vary from place to place, but where we are, that's what we're saying. Uh, and what we're also seeing is uh, the reemergence of some of the contingencies that buyers were were waiving um, as you know as recently as a year ago. We're talking about home inspections. We uh, most of the properties I sold recently have had a home inspection. Uh, financing contingencies, not waiving appraisal contingencies, not paying above appraised value. All these things that buyers were doing previously to get offers accepted, they no longer need to do because they're not competing against 29 other people. They're competing against maybe one other person, uh, maybe two other people, depending on the location. So uh, on the ground, what we're seeing is uh, that properties are not selling for 10% above the list price. We're seeing that people are able to have home inspections. I Just coming from my own experience, while people are having home inspections, we're not seeing a lot of negotiating um, resulting from that home inspection because there are multiple offers on the table. So in previous years, way pre-COVID, uh, what we might be able to do is negotiate a price down or repairs and things like that. Really what we're seeing in today's world is buyers are having that home inspection to protect their investment, make sure there is not something massively wrong with the property that they did not notice upfront. So while we are seeing home inspections, it's not, um, used as a tool right now by buyers to hammer uh, to get concessions out of the seller, at least now from what I'm seeing personally. Other parts of the country, though, it maybe had reverted back to how things had been, you know, seven, eight, uh, nine years ago where you could actually negotiate these terms. Um, what we're also starting to see is an increase in price reduction, increase in days on market. All of these things, though, recently appear to have plateaued. And I say appear for various reasons. Um, and I'll get back to that in a, in a second. The real reason why everything is, has plateaued is, you know, inflation is in check. Uh, I think the world economy, I think, not, no, I think the world economy has at least adjusted or become predictable resulting from the war in, in terms of, uh, you know, we, we kind of know what the ramifications are at this point in time. Things can change, obviously, but uh, as of today, we know what the impact is. Um, uh, interest rates are, are holding steady too. So all this combined to mean that we're just not seeing as much volatility in the real estate market at all. It's kind of uh, predictable, uh, which is which is nice, to be honest, uh, uh, given what we've been through for like the past a few years to have uh, a degree of predictability. Now, the reason why um, th we can't say this with 100% certainty though, is because the real estate market, uh, we're really looking at um, uh, lagging statistics, meaning that uh, homes that are closing right now, and now we have the publicly available data uh, in terms of sale prices, types of financing, things like that, uh, that reflects the market six to eight weeks ago when that offer was initially accepted. So we're really looking at a lot of lagging um, statistics here uh, as opposed to uh, the more predictable ones, um, which are just, uh, you know, the, with, with these small amounts of homes on the market, you know, the sample sizes are just too small for us to really sort of peg down uh, the more predictive stats that we, we would normally be looking at. That being said, just talking to other realtors, uh, you know, homes that are priced appropriately are generally selling uh, quickly, or in some cases, not all, some cases on the market for two to three weeks, which is great for buyers because they don't feel like they're in a rushed decision. For sellers, this is also a great market because uh, you know the, you're still able to get top dollar for your home. It's not like the market has gone down. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if you're in that position where you're looking to buy and sell, maybe this is a much more comfortable time for you than it was um, just a few months ago or a year ago where you had that concern of, yes, I can sell my property like that. I don't have to worry about it. I can get a mass amount of money, but where am I going to go? Now, with the reemergence of the contingencies, the, the slight slowdown in the market, that is not so much of a concern.
So, uh, you know, there's all a lot of information out there right now in terms of where we stand. Uh, good news, we haven't crashed. We don't think we're going to crash. Um, and there really is no uh, overall bad news in terms of the real estate market at this moment in time. Any questions, feel free to you know, comment or what people have been doing is sending me an email. That's great. Uh, or send me a text message. Even better. Uh, and we hope uh, to catch you guys next week.